This show features adults using adult language and discussing mature topics. You have been warned. Fast strategy. Oh, you would have loved the locust he made. Was it a locust or a flea when we were playing Mech 5? It was a flea. You were talking about it. You yeah. told me about it. Fucking I... amped up engine, supercharger, and a medium rifle. Basically yeah. a giant artillery cannon. Nice. I still hold an undeserved amount of pride when Alt told me that I was a better mech fighter than his dad. My dad's an idiot. <laughs> you shouldn't be saying that when she just said it was a compliment. And we're live. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, like... <laughs> no, like, I'm bad at the game. Don't get me wrong. It's <laughs> super funny because, like, my dad's been playing Mech Warrior since, God, before I was born. I mean, he was the one who got me into that universe. But every time I play Battle or like Mac Warrior Five with him, he'll just stop. Like, but the minute we get into combat, he just stops his mech and forms like a firing line. And I'm like, Dad, what are you doing? Lining up. You got to be careful. It's smooth bore. And then he's surprised when he gets shot on. Yeah, and then he's like, "Why is my mech blowing apart?" And I was like, "Cause you stood in front of an assault mech. I'm the one who has to pay for this." Contemplating my orb. <laughs> Welcome back to Silver Fleet, everyone. Hello. I'm Hi. upset Jesse's... because I spend money. Jesse's response. Team. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, and we are just about to get into a truly amazing uh, space battle, um, of which there are some tunes we will be using for it. Well, not really music per se, uh, but uh, sound effects uh, that we have permission to use. Uh, so uh, do check them out. They have some amazing stuff over on their channel. It is Ambient Lab, uh, Ambience Lab over on YouTube. Amazing stuff, great for ambience for all sorts of different things, sci-fi, all sorts of different fantasy stuff. There's a lot in there. It's worth checking out truly amazing addition to anything uh so hopefully it doesn't get muted later when we play it but if it does eh, just check us out on youtube and you'll hear the whole thing with the actual audio on it once the video goes up over there so sorry if you really wanted to watch it play back on twitch but you know how things are once sound starts being played it's auto muted forever so we'll hope that it doesn't be but if it is just check us out on youtube once the playback comes up and so I will do the recap because there was a lot of stuff that went on um, last time. So we won't uh, we won't go through quite everything. But uh, you guys met up in a neutral part of space uh, and gathered forth a colossal entourage of your own fleet armada uh, of mercenaries and orcs and uh, laser knights and other people from different parts of the verse. Uh, you did rally at a, uh, a, a space alcohol distillery, uh, which is a nebula made completely of drinkable alcohol, uh, and the still distills it down to usable format, of course. It's just an alcoholic gas out in space um, normally, but uh, the still harvests it and distills it down to drinkable format, purifying any impurities that might be in it. Uh, so the still was very happy for all the business that they just got that you brought over to their particular sector. Since, since the communications have been down for a while, they had a huge stockpile that the armada you brought with you really worked through. <laughs> Mostly the orcs and the mercenaries, but you know, everyone else had their fair share of, of tasty alcoholic beverages at the stills uh, service they had there. But you were all prepared, ready to go, and have done some preparing for a, a, you know, a little while here, getting everyone kind of ready and stuff. I think we set like a few days or a week or something like that, or to wait for everyone to get there. Um, so after that time frame, you were all prepared and ready to go, and you have your destination, something that, uh, you have been maybe dreading in the pits of your stomachs for a while, maybe not, uh, but uh, the epic battle with the Silver Fleet, the mysterious Silver Fleet, um, which you know are pieces of the cosmic ooze itself. Uh, how that exactly works, you are about to find out. So, does anyone have anything else they wish to do or say 
in the moment uh, while the family slash friends and mercenary companies are all here. Um, by family, of course, I mean Quatzali and uh, Yay. yeah, <laughs> Quatzali and fam are uh, all gathered there as well. Uh, uh, Meryl, your family is uh, obviously there too. Uh, some of them. Not all of them. <laughs> uh, so they uh, they all wish you adieu as they're definitely not joining you on your perilous fight uh, to uh, fight a universe threatening threat. <laughs> so eyes and some of your buddies are here too and some of them are joining the fight um, as well. Uh, so everyone's kind of got family and or friends here that have joined um, from parts of the verse and whatnot. Uh, that you know of anyway. Um, and we are about to have the epic fight. So does anyone need anything else they need done? Any preparation or anything? Mm. I'm going to fill up my uh, canteen or little flask with uh, a little bit of the nebulous, nebula uh, right before we go. Okay. And, and uh, just tip just a little bit of the fuel tank of my crab. Mm -hmm. just, just for luck. All right. Anyone else? Uh, just a quick uh, I love you to mom as she goes back home. Yeah. Yeah. She's not going to hang out at the still. She's going to go back home. <laughs> wow. Wizard mom needs her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Quatzali, the circus does depart at about the same time. Uh, Hugs all around. Yep. And they, uh, they depart, um, stating that uh, the mysterious businessman that paid for their trip here also paid for them to perform somewhere else. You can only hope that Maybe. he paid them really well. I hope so. Because you know the mysterious businessman is your, uh, your benefactor of this entire quest, the, uh, the mysterious Dusoff, the Hellfire Drake. I honestly expected you to say the Shadow Broker. <laughs> no, he's a bit more dangerous than the Shadow Broker. <laughs> and a, a bit is an exaggeration, of course. He's a lot more dangerous than the Shadow Broker. But um, anyway, that's uh, all we have then. Everyone prepares and gets ready. And a few jumps later, you see before you in the distance a colossal sparkling mass the size of an entire solar system. This mass of silver, sparkly, ooze-like substance seems to awaken as you come in strike distance. And you see tiny pieces of it drift off and form into an armada of ships. One particular ship in the very back looks about the size of a carrier. Uh, and you see just ships forming off of it and parts of the ooze kind of wisping up and swirling into it, forming more uh, of the fighter craft off of the main carrier. Uh, all of you that are planning some sort of strategy in this particular fight, give me an intelligence save. At proficiency. Okay. Define strategy? At proficiency or at something other than fly straight in guns blazing. Well, looks like I don't know how to roll. <laughs> I have to roll them. Ooh, sickety. 25. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, in save, you said? Yeah. Well, also with 25. All right. I have proficiency already, so. I got a six. Okay. Quatzilla, it's difficult to formulate an effective strategy. There is a lot of fighters here. Get I'm not very smart. <laughs> you tried, though. I'm going to give you that. Speaking of fighters, <clears throat> sorry to go off topic, but apparently all the flights to go into current events, flights um, around the world are completely avoiding Ukraine. Russia. I mean, they've been doing like they're I mean, I'm going to say super Scotty. Away. And then Air We've been India, doing that already. Air India by itself is this lone plane going straight. Leroy! Scotty, well, they, they have they been... They, the they also have been avoiding Ukraine for a while. Mm -hmm. 
since the one flight got shot down by separatists. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They've been kind of avoiding the Ukraine in general. But yeah, there's now Which even more. What I'm trying reason. to get at is Air India is like, eh, war, whatever. We're just going to fly a, a What's commercial airline over top of this. So... Mm-hmm. Anyway, sorry. I mean, if you bought the ticket, you know what you were in for. Right. If yeah. you look, and if you look <laughs> to your right, maybe. And if you look to your right, you can see the ghost of Kiev. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fuck yeah, ghost of Kiev. Fuck yeah. Sorry. Right. Sorry for the discussion. Uh, no, you're anyway. fine. You're fine. Um, and you you speculate, um, Tulura and uh, Rusty, um, that uh, that carrier is definitely the source of the control behind this massive, massive fleet. Getting past this armada to the carrier is going to be quite difficult. Uh, but uh, you both surmise a fairly decent strategy of cover your craft as best as possible to kind of like cut away in there that you know if you can hit the carrier, you've got a direct path towards the ooze um, since the ooze is kind of tendrilled up into the carrier at this point. I, I, I would like to submit for consideration a preliminary strategy of uh, basically approaching to within like striking distance, uh, forming up into the Ultima frame and immediately opening discussions with the Ultima cannon. It is a 6,000 foot long, 500 foot wide line and all creatures and pilots of ships within their area must make a DC 18 deck saving throw or take 33 mega radiant damage. So we punch a big hole to start and then fill the gap. Okay. We can break up after that and let let everybody have their individual fun. But mm-hmm. just, just opening with opening with that needle punch, I think, is a good strategy to start with. Okay. And it's on a recharge five six, like a dragon breath, so it's not a one a day. How much is it if they succeed? Uh it half, I'm imagining. Okay. Yeah, half, half on a six Okay. I would like to ask another question just out of curiosity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Does alert take up a passenger seat or can he effectively fit to the frame of any vehicle? Uh, alert can fit to the frame of anything he chooses to. He is technically both zero and about two tons of mass. Oh, fun. We like that. Whatever he chooses to be based on his solidification. I'm about to send you a message. Okay. All right, so uh, we can go ahead and fire up that ambience because the space battle is about to commence. Um, And it is a pretty cool ambience. I've listened to it for a while uh, before when I was testing and writing for the campaign. Um, Uh, and the uh, space battle begins as the allies you have brought bring one hell of a kick to the table. And the silver fleet, um, you notice as some of the craft are destroyed, more of them are created from the destroyer or from the carrier in the back. So the carrier in the back seems to be perpetuating the amount of craft on the field uh, as a static value. So the giant punch through the middle did give you a bit of a gap to kind of shove that direction as best you can, but it's still going to be one hell of a fight. Everyone flying a craft needs to give me a pilot check, and everyone firing a gun needs to give me an attack roll. I assume we can do both of those, yes? Yeah, fighter craft can do both. Those of you in fighters get to roll twice. Yay! And this is not yet initiative, correct? No. Cool. Just making sure. All right. Uh, Plus piloting. six, Plus six so okay, dirty twenty for my piloting. Okay. Are we carpooling again? I think so. Okay. 
going to write mine down and just wait for you to ask, just in case. Dalgar got a 15 on his. And a 19 okay. to hit with um, his hammer. Okay. scale is like the Reinhardt hammer but also the size of an entire like thruster like rocket booster <laughs> thruster yeah. right I just imagine right. something from the old robot wars where it's just this tiny little yeah. wedge and just the hammer smacks out of it every so oh time. yeah that was a brilliant design yeah <laughs> oh yeah do you want us to put our roles in chat would that be easier or do you want to call yeah. them out uh, you can put them in chat that's fine uh, so the crowd knows um Audience knows. I got a 15 for Dalgar on a pilot check and a 25 to hit with the pulse cannon. Nice, nice. Ace shooting there. Almost the same as mine. Nice. I assume you're shooting? I'm I'll piloting? Shoot. Yeah, you're piloting. Yep. You then I got a 15 for pilot. I got a 13 for shoot. All right. What is the shoot skill again? What are we using shoot. for that? It's range, probably proficiency for proficient flying. Yeah, it's a like a ranged proficiency attack. All right, that uh, makes it easy then. Thirty twenty for piloting, eighteen for shooting. Uh, actually, since I don't have proficiency in piloting, would hmm. I add proficiency bonus to hit the gun? Uh, yeah, the proficiency with the guns would be added, like your proficiency. So Blake, um, just out of curiosity, would a 19 hit whatever it is I'm swinging at? Yeah, okay, for great. sure. Um, that needs to make a strength saving throw. Um, uh, mega strength, mega save. Yeah, a mega strength. <laughs> uh, it succeeds. It just chooses to succeed as legendary? Okay. No, it, it rolled, it succeeded. Okay. Unless your DC is higher than 25. No, that's fine. Uh, so it is it is not knocked around. Um, <clears throat> since we can't really go prone out in space, I'm figuring it's it is the equivalent you, of the... You DC. note that when you strike it with the hammer, because the craft are made of nanites, when you hit it, it kind of splats like a goo rather uh, than, like, shatters. Okay. I have to figure out a way to so freeze You think maybe that's like... why it didn't get knocked around when you hit it. It took damage, but it kind of splats like an ooze rather than, you know... <laughs> I'm going to put on over the comms. Does anybody with an arcane cannon have Kona Cold? No. Ah, oh, man, that ain't. Negative. Uh, some of the elven craft in the back that did join the fight because they were so thankful that you fixed the array, and they liked Lure better than that asshole guy. Mm -hmm. um, they kind of sided with you guys to help. Uh, they fire off cones of cold from their arcane cannons. Oh, that's extra nice. So now hopefully we'll have some more solid and less mobile. Yeah, targets. yeah, you less splat and more crack. <laughs> All right, uh, everyone needs to roll initiative now. All right. Ooh, starfighters with initiative. Ooh, bonus advantage on initiative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, not oh, rolling damn. that dice for the second one. Putting it, putting it into things, but nineteen. Oh yeah. Sorry, I thought I was muted. <laughs> oh, that's fine. And I got a 14 for my initiative, so. I should I should note that all of you guys notice that the weapons that the Silver Fleet uses is some sort of ionic lightning coil of some kind. Hmm. They all use the same kind of weaponry. Oh, okay. Ah. You haven't seen the carrier fire a weapon yet but you do see the fighter craft kind of swarming around the outside of it. So, like, they're protecting it pretty well. So, it would have been a five, but the initiative advantage with the fighter gave me a 22. So, nice. Meryl, what, Meryl? I do not know how to pronounce that properly. I'm Mariel. so sorry. Meryl, okay. Um, what is your dex? Uh, my dex is 20. Yeah, you go <laughs> first. <laughs> Thanks to that ability score bonus that we got when we leveled up. I got a uh, 24. I got a 12. 
I'm so fucking good tonight. Hey, to Don't be worry, fair, I'm gonna if you're put getting... us in really good positions for you to be good later. I'm mm -hmm. not even drunk. What the hell? Phrasing. Um, hey, you're getting all of your <laughs> you're getting all of your bad rolls out now. You oh. hope. Laura, you're supposed to twenty four. Yes. What is your initiative, Rusty? I initiative. Oh, so I, I it's fourteen. Did you roll that giant ass LED twenty? No, just this heavy ass hematite one. Okay, you just it looked like you bent over the side of your chair to check it on the floor, and I was just kidding. <laughs> no, that would be funny. No, my uh, my dice tower is right here. What's your initiative, Ison? Ison. Yep, if I me, 23. 23, good gravy. All right. Well, it's good to know Callie's here with us in spirit. Oh, <laughs> damn. He's busy having a sad time in Vampire. Hey. Let me guess, she brought it upon herself? Probably. Mm. Probably. I mean, I was going to say, that's literally <laughs> just Vampire. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. It no, that's, li that's literally just Callie from my experience. I mean, unless it's our game of Vampire, in which case then you and me just wreck house and Callie. everyone gets mad at us. Or you jackasses shoot me. When, when... Well, you got in the way of my shot. I mean, you say that as if you didn't miss every single fucking shot. You can't prove that. I can look back at the uh, no. uh, at the logs. No, not allowed. Public here. You can't. You can't <laughs> use. You can't use actual written evidence against me. All right. I think this is appropriate there. for the. I am the Senate. Yeah. Rhonda, let me know if Senate? I missed somebody. I think that's everyone. NPCs will go last. So the rest of the fleet you brought with you will go last. Yes. Just I say, because just, I we're just call dealing that the with the slots. Yeah. We're we're dealing with the silver fleet here. I can storyline my way through the NPCs. <laughs> you guys in the silver fleet are the ones we're concerned with. So, all right, uh, leading initiative to Laura. All right, well, I'm, uh, I guess I'm gonna just kind of fly in and, cause I, I assume since we did strategizing, Sage, I'm looking at you cause I'm assuming you are carrying um, the, the, our uh, alert, right? You have no evidence of that. Considering <laughs> I had, I'm the one who did the strategy with the max level, I'm pretty sure I know what the strategy is. Yeah. Not a strategy. I just said, hey, want to ride on my ship? Let's go. But That's nobody heard the conversation. All right. Yeah, so I guess I'm not helping uh, helping with that then. <laughs> yeah, Talora's just going to start fighting things then. So I guess I'll just start. Uh, so, anyways, I started blasting. Okay. Huh. That Trying is to kind cut of... a path towards that carrier. Ah, no, she's more. Um, She's doing more protection duty to the. um. Bigger ships, because bigger. That's what's more, just as important. The the idea here was less strategy and more. If nobody's acting like this ship should be protected, then nobody's going to be acting like this ship is to be protected. I feel like there might be pro problem with that, and it's the fact that you're carrying a uh, a, sw a thing of nano a nano machines on you that might get detected. I mean, not if it's not doing anything, right? If it's just laying dormant in the ship, it's not giving off any kind of energy signature particularly. It's fair. To hit, I have a, a 23 to hit with my that pulse hits. cannons. Sweet. And 3d8. Where is where's my d8s? I don't use these dice. Uh, 11 mega radiant damage. Ew. Okay. You damage in your bite. Silver yeah. Fleet crap. And yeah, like I said, I'll just keep parrying like the ones that are on if they're coming closer. Like you know, just being a nuisance, like fighters should be doing. Got it. Eisen, you are riding atop the Mega Crab XLR attack vehicle. Uh, there are targets nearby. You may make attack rolls against. Or if you're riding inside the Mega Crab. 
at Rusty's behest, you may fire weapons from the mega crab that you're inside. And we're not doing a drive by. Uh, how close are they? Uh, they're within attack range. Um, the mega crab just hammered, literally just bashed them with its hammer. So, okay, a point of order here. The crab is the head of my mega fighter, right? So the frame fighter has a, a fighter sized, like a frame sized version of my hammer, but so does the crab and like a appropriate to its own scale, some sort of thing. I, he's very much like committed to this bit. Um, <laughs> that all being said, at your disposal are also a, a missile barrage, uh, which has like a DC like your spell casting. Uh, and it's 3d6 mega force damage uh, to t five targets within a range of 1500 feet or a long range of uh, 4500, which I don't understand how that works supposedly, but that's how it is written on the stat. So um, you have that or you've got the Scorcher, which is also 1500 range. Uh, well, I'll just... Uh... Are we static or is it just constant moving? We're I heading. Just, you're moving. Everyone's kind carrier. of like, yeah, trying to blast a wedge towards the carrier. Okay, how far is the carrier? The carrier is quite a distance away. Like, a, like, do we have a, a fixed location on this, or is it an indeterminate amount? As uh, as it is. It is approximately. How many rounds would we estimate at like a, a flight speed of, say, about five rounds? Okay. Uh, then I'll try. I guess I'll just uh, open up with the uh, swing in my uh, shit. Sorry. Swing in your shit. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, fire my uh, shoulder cannon at this one. Okay. Now, do I just roll regular damage as I'm, you know... I you just stuck to the outside suit? blasting, so yeah. <laughs> okay. 24? Okay. <laughs> so... Eighteen damage. Okay. All right. And Anything else you want to do on your turn? We've talked before. I'm not able to fire my cannon twice in the same round, am I? Uh, I don't know if that was established as a thing that you can do. So, no, I think the cannon's once per round for its blast because it's got, like, a cooldown. You can fire other stuff. It's, like, based on a... His shoulder-mounted cannon? No, it's a weapon. Oh. It's not a tachyon missile, right? No. Okay. Okay, then I will go ahead and uh, just uh, hit it with my hammer as well. Okay. Bonus action, blessed weapon. Nice. That'll be 21 to hit. That's a hit. Nineteen damage. Okay. All right. And uh, I'm trying Anything to else you want to do in your thing. turn? Would I be able to try to mount this thing? Um, you don't know if stepping on it's a good idea. Fair enough. Then that'd be it. It is made of a swarm of hostile nanites. Eh, everything's hostile. <laughs> it's space. Every even the air is hostile. Mario, well, it is your turn. All right. Can I get a quick? refresher on what this uh what i'm driving and what i can do with it you are piloting a 
saber provided yep. to you by i think it's a saber right yeah it's a saber yeah it's a saber that looks a lot like samus's saber from super metroid um but uh you know Polly, it's probably not as cool is as in, the staff block is cool in when i drop of course but in the close. uh in the zoom if you look in the um discord it's the most recent thing uh there is a stat block for the saber in the second page also on page one but it uses yeah. your hit points and your ac yes all right and yours is a two piloter so you can fly and quatsily can gun or you can fly Ooh. and gun and quatsily can gun Woo. okay um i think i would like to try and help hit things all right try and clear that path to the carrier absolutely the sooner we can deal with that carrier the better it seems uh, to be the center of everything mm -hmm. okay then i will roll to hit okay probably not with is this with the dexterity modifier? Just like a ranged attack for your character. Oh, yeah. Yep. Not with a 10. Nope. Nah, it just doesn't doesn't quite hit it. That's fine. All right. Your piloting focus skills. On driving. Yeah. Your piloting skills will continue to carry over uh, with what you've rolled before, unless you state you are making a different maneuver, to which case I will allow you to roll another pilot check. Uh, and you have to take the one you've rolled for better or worse. So the preemptive pilot checks were kind of your ability to navigate this uh, storm of ships that are flying everywhere, crossing every which way, stuff flying all over, fighters everywhere, people trying to cover other people. It's it is a massive space battle, like mm -hmm. the likes of which would be like, I don't know, in some colossal franchise of movie and or video game but twice that <laughs> all right you cool if I stay course? War or something yeah mm. can't do that it infringes on scotty's character idea the... nah. bioc don't steal i think i'll <laughs> i think i'll stay my course all right that'll be edge hog <laughs> original Zora. character do not steal it is your initiative. Okay. The big ship itself is also firing off randomly and shooting things in odd random you, directions. You haven't noticed it fire a single shot yet. Oh. You note all the fighters are firing in quite a colossal number of directions, but the big ship itself has not fired off any guns yet. In that case... Plan M for Meteor Storm. Okay. Cast through your arcane cannon. No, I can just cast it. That's a mega spell. Hmm. It's, mega it? spell. That's right. Yeah, Sorry. That was arcane is. cannon. If it's a mega level yeah, spell, you, then yes. Because yeah, it's level mega. Yeah, they say, there's no, uh, there's no um, arcane cannon on the spec on the are uh, these got these things. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I have no way of doing it other than my own means. Right. So, in front of me, just about at the edge of my piloting distance, I create mm -hmm. a barrage of asteroids at a point you choose within range, which is up to 10,000 feet. Mega creatures and the pilots of any ships in a 1,000 foot radius centered on a point directly in front of me must make a dexterity saving throw. If there is no creature in that role, the save automatically fails. And any target takes 8d6 mega bludgeoning damage on a fail, they're half as much on a save. What's the save, DC? Jumping over to that because I'm a dumbass and didn't have it right on my ship. 16. 16. Uh, that would be a fail. Woohoo! 8d6. Da, 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 that is a 36 mega bludgeoning damage to anything in that field. Okay. That is quite a large amount of damage and a very large amount of exploded stuff. Uh, the carrier looks like it took some damage, but 
yeah, you're not sure the scale of how bad it was since it's ooze-like, so it has a tendency to flex with what hits it. So it's less obvious the damage you've done to the carrier, but all the little ships that were in that blast radius just get shredded like cheese. Nice, and I head straight towards that direction. Oh, yes. All right. All right, uh, that was Zora. We go to Dalgar. Okay, well... A giant um, explosion of meteorites has uh, blasted a, a big hole in the defenses and left a clear path that Zora appears to be taking. Okay, well... Oh, I have an, I have an advantage on this. Doesn't matter. The, um... I guess I fly in through that opening or shoot it first. All right. Um, yeah. Ten. Ten? Nope. Not hitting anything unless you were shooting at the carrier. I was shooting. The and then you probably still didn't hit anything. I imagine we both went in there side by side and then everything that you tried to hit was struck by a meteor before your lasers hit them. We'll I like that. Let's go with that. Dalgar isn't really, um, this isn't really his forte. He's but you're doing a great job of, for Zora. You're doing a great job of clearing meteors for the rest of us, though. For Rusty. <laughs> well, uh, seeing this great, huge, gigantic gravel pit that, uh, that Zora just opened up for us, he's going to punch the transform button, uh, change it from fr uh, frame mode into fighter mode, so his speed becomes 4,500. Uh, and okay. if... If we can avoid actually having to do combat, I'm going to use a uh, double move and just get out as far into the, the lead as I can and signal the uh, the rest of the buckboard to basically form up behind me. Okay. Um, let me know when we approach within 1500 of the carrier. You move how fast with that? It's 4500 or 9000 with a double move. All right, you are halfway there. So to you, it's only another double move to the carrier. All right, but I don't want to get out too far ahead. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to just move at regular speed, but I, I do want to be sure that we're bringing, bringing the point here. So. Uh, All right, uh, so you, you take point on the charge towards the carrier. Uh, Quatsily, you may fire when ready. I will fire when ready. Uh -huh. I'm ready. I fire. <laughs> I'm ready. I fire. I got a fucking 11. Oh, my God. Uh, your shot was the same effect as uh, Mariel's and Dalgar's. You hit it, but you didn't quite hit it in that spot that did damage to it. Hey, Alt. Yeah. How many hot coffees are we in, Mana? Uh, Not enough. Uh, four. <laughs> oh. Sorry, that's it's actually an action to transform, not a double. So I'm going to use my action to transform, and I can only move 4,500 on this turn. Okay, so. that works even better. I thought it was a bonus. I was mistaken. All right, uh, the silver fleet goes. So Jesse, you could say we're all just a little bit rusty tonight. Uh, <laughs> hey. there, there's a dwarf on your shoulder hanging over dear life right now as you go that fast. Meh. No. You should hold on tighter. You, you've got mag boots, so I assume you're pulling the Neo move where he's all the way back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just not good on the knees. No, not generally. Neo. <laughs> um, well, you're always welcome to come sit in the cabin. There's a passenger seat in the crab tank. No, no, you, you go that fast. You look out your window and all that's there is my boots hanging on. <laughs> <laughs> uh is a booster seat. <laughs> Dalgar, uh, Mariel, and Zora, you take nine mega lightning damage from the Silver Fleet firing your direction. No save. Uh, that that was first your AC. They rolled attack. Uh... Well, or, sorry. You have different AC. I was looking at the crafts. What is your AC, Dalgar? 17. Okay, they missed you then. Mariel, what's your AC? 16. 
Okay, they missed you as well. And I said Zora, so what's your, your AC is 19, right? That it is. Okay, yeah, they missed you too. Never mind. Yeah. I looked at the wrong thing. <laughs> I forgot it's you guys' AC. I'm not used to that. I was looking at the weapons like we were, the spaceships like we did before. Um, okay, never mind. Uh, they fire at you, and thanks to your ace piloting, they miss. You dodge the blasts from the mega lightning coming off of their craft. Uh, you don't think that your allies have done as good, though, as some of them have taken some hits. And by allies, I mean NPCs. Uh, the NPCs go, and they see your mad rush towards the carrier, Rusty, and Zora, and uh, everyone else who's kind of mad rushing that direction. And they kind of see that, you know, maybe that's a really good idea. So they provide cover fire, blasting that direction uh, to pretty decent efficiency. Uh, you note that the elven mega weapons uh, or mega spells seem to be far more effective than the weapons from a lot of other people's craft. The only other weapons that are as effective as the elves weapons is the orcs weapons. Um, because most of them are explosions. So they seem to be fairly effective in the fire missile barrage area, uh, while the elves are just firing off mega spells through arcane cannons and mega spells in general. Uh, similar to Zora as a meteor swarm or two, punching more holes in the uh, fleet itself. Uh, the Silver Fleet spent part of its maneuver generating more craft from the carrier. So it was not as effective this turn as it could have been, thanks to Zora's attack. Uh, and thanks to Zora's attack, the elves also saw to it that there's far less Silver Fleet craft actively on the field, because the elves followed suit with some of their weapons. Uh, and so did the orcs with the, a swarm of missile barrages that filled the space with just a, a wall of explosions. You know? Uh, I might be the only Herulian in space right now, but it sure as hell feels like I got a fleet behind me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I rolled some very effective attacks from your allies, so the Silver Fleet took a massive loss on this particular turn. Uh, to Laura, you are leading the charge, or at All least right. as far as initiative goes. Ahead of you is Rusty, though. Well, I mean, I, I already said that to is more playing a back roll support for this, so she's right. more protecting uh, our bigger ships. Okay. So yeah, she'll just keep parrying any ship that's nearby her. Oh, it's okay. a nat 20. Ooh, that's definitely a hit then. That's going to be some mega, mega damage. Roll that beautiful bean put Oh, yeah. Are we doing the hundreds for this, or? Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a, is there a crit table for this one? I can No, handle. not for this particular one, but there's oh. the regular crit table. There. All right, I'll roll it. God, it'd be funny. They throw their weapon. You see a fucking blast. <laughs> Silver Fleet just loses the lightning blaster. <laughs> I would, that I would that love genuinely would be hilarious. Uh, 55. The fight's actually over. <laughs> oh, hey, what are you guys going to do without your fucking guns? Oh, matches. <laughs> yeah. I got a 5-5. Five, five. 55 for my um, crit, my D100 chart. Okay. And then, damn it. Actually, I guess I have to wait to see what the result is for the D100. Because some of them alter if I roll it. You alter the crit. Yeah. In some way. Oh. What was that? 55, 55. result, Scotty? Are we talking about the Xanathar's guy? Yeah, if, if, or whoever has Xanathar's. I don't. I wasn't sure. I, I, I was not even. I, not even there. <laughs> it's okay. I'll it up right now. I got it. It's all right. It's Zora's got it. Bring we'll go with Zora. 55. 55. Your staggering blow causes the target to be stunned until the end of your next turn. Ooh, that's really Damn. Bad. That's really nice. good. Do you stun Ooh, the crap out of that craft? That's going to be some big damage, too. Nice. Big way. First roll. Second roll. A uh, suddenly forty-one mega damage. Who that craft explodes. Nice. Woo. 
And that's At my this turn. point, you have figured out that the individual Silver Fleet fighters have about 30 mega hit points. So I just overkilled that that one. Yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. that it one's... is obliterated. Uh, hell yeah. Love to hear it. You I'm note good... that as each craft is exploded from the Silver Fleet, the specs of the craft seem to drift back into the cosmic ooze. That's pretty cool. Of course it does. But Damn you man. note that as every fighter is exploded, you see not a single person piloting any of them. That tracks. Mm. Yeah, that tracks. Okay. Uh, on that particular note there, we go to Eisen. You are hanging on for dear life as the craft hurdles towards the carrier. Do I need half my movement to stand up vertically now? Uh, you I mean, might. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there anything nearby? Oh, there's a lot nearby. There's some debris. Uh, there's a couple craft in the distance, but you're not going to be able to hit with your hammer. Okay. Are they within uh, cannon range? Yeah. Uh, and I'll fire my cannon. All right, fire away. Fire my laser. <laughs> uh, 18. That hits. All right, so this will be... Two. 21 radio. Okay, that seems effective. And... I don't know if it's going to do anything, but I'll fire my handheld rifle. Okay. Yeah, that misses eight. Eight is definitely a miss. Somewhere in the next galaxy, that's going to hit something, and they're going to be very upset. Definitely. Yeah, that's it. Mario. All right, let's try this again. Round two. Are you joining the uh, the mad dash towards the carrier? Uh, yes, I believe I am. Okay. That's a much better roll. How about a 22 to hit? That is definitely a hit. Now, were you shooting at the smaller craft, or were you going to take a pot shot at the carrier way off in the distance? Uh, I wasn't aware that I was close enough to make an attempt. Uh, if you moved towards the carrier, then at this turn you may take a single pot shot at disadvantage. Okay. What the hell, we'll try it. So roll again with disadvantage? Yeah. That time I got a 13. Okay. Uh, surprisingly, you do hit the carrier. Nice. Roll your damage. Twenty-two damage. Nice. Uh, as you Mega fire ratings. towards the carrier with your, uh, you guys have. What did we say? Brain fart. What was the weapons you guys had? Pulse? Uh, I have a pulse, pulse cannon. cannon. Pulse cannons, okay. As you fire the pulse cannon at the carrier, uh, you note that the carrier has some sort of shield on it. Cool. As you fire at it and you damage the shield, but you see a shield kind of like appear around the craft as if it were there, nobody's fired at it yet to hit it. And you hit it and re kind of almost reveal to all of your allies that, hey, it's got a shield. <laughs> so yeah, you may have just done a good favor towards everyone's mad dash towards the carrier. You might uh, want to try do... hitting the carrier, guys. <laughs> Anything else on your turn? Um, Just keep trucking along, I suppose. OK. Zora. Hang on, mouthful. Oh, you're fine. 
I'm terribly sorry. I'm having me a yeah. snack and caught me at the wrong time. Yep, you're fine. Go ahead when you're ready. I really, really, really need to know how much more is between us and the carrier. Uh, you moved one movement. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was we're still five right behind movements Rusty. away. So four movements, it's about twelve thousand feet. And how many craft between us and that? Uh at the current moment, thanks to um your allies, between you and this the carrier at this particular turn, there are only four fighters between you and the carrier. Okay. Thanks that, to the mass push from you and your allies. Well, if that's the case, I'm going to hope some of my other allies press forward with the same barrage of spells because I'm going to do something to piss off the entire fleet. I'm a whole ship. <laughs> do you need the definition for that one? Yes. Understood. One moment. Scrolling up. Grab my alphabet there for a second. Oh, hold ship. Okay, okay, what's yeah. the hold what's ship. the DC? It's sixteen still. Choose oh, okay. a, a spaceship you can see within range. The target's engineer oh. must make a wisdom saving throw. If there is no creature in that role, the save automatically fails. On a failed save, the target's speed and maneuverability are reduced to zero for the duration, which is up to a minute. Concentration. Do, 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 do. Any weapons mounted on it can't be fired. If the target's engineer is at their station and not incapacitated, they can make an attempting save and throw to end on one of their turns. Well, they would attempt the saving throw if they hadn't rolled a one. So they critically failed the save. Then I've just hold their capital ship. Or held you their capital certainly ship. did. And I will take my full movement. Let me just see what that is going to do. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, about 50% of the Silver Fleet seems also held by your effect. What? It's a drone controller. Oops. Holy shit. It's awesome. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> This feels like Basilisk Force Meditation, except on a grander scale. This one little pilot, fighter pilot, has just given the biggest <laughs> finger to the half of the entire fleet that we're facing and just fucking going straight at it. Right. I love this. Love to see it. <laughs> uh, Dalgar, you witness a quite amazing feat by your uh, ally, Zora. Here. Zora, I'm assuming you're also flying towards the craft as you were doing that. Oh, absolutely. Full movement. Okay. 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 Dalgar, so, it is your turn. You witness uh, half of the fleet stop moving as the carrier stops moving. Excellent work there, Zora. You hear on the comms. And um, I, what is the carrier? I know that's all nanite stuff, but I think um, are there any? Does it look like there's any systems on the cruiser, like um, a force field generator on it, or a um? On the Rusters exterior, the on the exterior, you can't quite make out such a thing. Um, you're not sure how these craft move through space because none of the fighters or the cruiser seem to have a visible thruster of some kind. Um, the The fighters actually look kind of like uh, a teardrop with a bunch of spikes coming off the back. So there's like a smooth part on the front and then a bunch of spikes coming off the back. The carrier looks like a very big version of the same thing. Hmm. Okay, then. And as um, you note, know, when the carrier makes fighters, the little teardrops pull off of the carrier in like, like a liquid. Okay. Um, is it always the same spot? It, it replicates? Yes, from the smooth part of the front. Okay, um, I'm going to attempt something that only fighters can do. Um, it's called a targeted attack. Are we in uh, range okay. yet? Target attack has a range of 1,000 feet. 1,000? 
Would I? Yeah. I would not be able to get within a thousand. Then. Okay. Um, you moved two rounds now. You need three more, unless you're double moving. Then you only need one. You know, I'm gonna risk it. Okay. That'll be Dalgars. All right. You mad dash towards it. All right. After Dalgar, we have Rusty. Uh, Rusty is very much of the same mind as Dalgar, actually, and seeing this wonderfully stiff opening that uh, that Zora has opened for us is going to just aim right for that and basically just line up a caravan of buckboards uh, alongside of Dalgar and do, do the double move. So with the next movement, we can close and begin our work. All right. And uh, after that is Quatsili, do you open fire on the craft that are still moving? No, I'm going to shoot at the ones that are slowed. Okay. All right. You take... are... Wait. Mm. You can also, like Mariel, you can also attempt a pot shot at the carrier if you want, but it is at disadvantage at this range. Well, the ones that are still moving are just like itty bitty ones, right? Yeah, the fighters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just I'll just shoot one of those on. Okay. Uh, that's a fourteen. That is a hit. Hooray! Woo! You have now noted that the AC of the Silver Fleet is thirteen. Well, for the small ones. What's the damage on this? Uh, three D eight. 3d8, okay. That's mega radiant, oh. right? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I did 17 damage. Okay. You damage one of the fighters. All right. And the silver fleet goes, um, much to your surprise or maybe glee at this point to further just create even more of an epic moment of what Zora did, uh, the Silver Fleet Carrier seems incapable of making more fighters on this turn. So the existing fighters that can fly that are still there, which is half of the ones that were around after you did all this damage, which is not as many as there was before, uh, begin just mad swarming towards where you are. Uh, specifically towards Rusty and Dalgar, who are in the lead. And Dalgar, your AC is what? I know I just asked you last 17. Time. 17, okay. Wait, Dalgar or Zora? Dalgar. I thought it was, you said 17 or 16? Uh, I was 16. You were 16. I never stated my AC. That's why I'm like, wait. Oh, okay. No, you, you had to because a couple of rounds ago, you, oh, me, and Mary. 17. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, what is your AC, Rusty? 20. 20? Okay. Has to jump on the chip. Sprout's leg. And Zora, you still have that crit chart up, right? I, I, have I it do up. indeed. Oh. 75. Go ahead. Crit or fail? Uh, critical hit. 75? Yeah. Roll all of the attack, attacks damage dice three times and add them Oof. together. Oh no. Well, someone's about to die. Bye. Goodbye forever. Ah, uh, you're and a Jedi. You're fine. Not you're a laser and you're a laser knight you'll just go back to be one with you'll just the respond power. there is it that i do that right <laughs> i think so yeah. okay uh, please don't sue me, me disney i don't have money for that sue me it'd be hilarious <laughs> <laughs> please don't sue us michael Roden. no so for context this is a thing i constantly threaten on callie's game of Cal is like, mm -hmm. Michael Rod wrote it, please, please don't sue us. And my response is, please do, it will be hilarious. Um, one craft manages to hit you, Rusty, and you take nine mega lightning. Uh, two craft hit you, Dalgar, one of them critted. 
Uh, so the one that hit you normally does uh-huh. nine mega lightning. Uh-huh. Uh, and the one that traded against you does 27 mega lightning. Oh. Uh, the yeah, that one, was nearly. And we're not using the hit points of the ship examples. We're using our own. Your own hit points as the hit points of your fighter. Uh, the one that attacks Rusty needs to roll at disadvantage because as it fires, I use protection and it rolls at disadvantage. Oh. Okay, it still hit. Oh, yeah, well, I tried. You tried. It's yeah, right. You deflected you it, but it hit anyway. It's it's not it's not serious. Like, definitely the impact like rattles the ship a little bit, but he it's just grits his teeth. Scuffing the trucking. paint. Right. It scuffs the paint, and your batteries on the ship go overcharge detected. Well, <laughs> if this was if this was the default version of the ship, I would have just blown up. Yeah. Gee, <laughs> Thankfully, it's Gee, not over limit system malfunction. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like yeah. that. Yeah, there's like a clear spot where it got hit really good. And there's like smoke flying off the back. Like a little there's already back. smoke flying off the back. This guy, like, he has like rocket flaming oh, from smoke. Rusty's, oh, but I now mean, it's flying fine. off of Delgar's. <laughs> oh, great. Well, he just mashes with everybody else in the front. <laughs> I just. Uh, we even got what, you the flames. I know <laughs> Delgar needs to get. He needs to get a specific construct that he can have on the exterior of the ship that can fix it on. Oh, I yeah, thought you were going to say cool. they could get shot on the fly. <laughs> Unless it has blue and silver paint job, then somehow it just, it's always through. Okay. All right. Sorry, I'm rolling other things in the background here. Uh, Hang on. How dare you? Okay. You have a whole fleet to deal with. How yeah, how dare, how dare I manage two separate fleets? Um, <laughs> and your allies go. And seeing the opening... They make a massive push towards all of the craft that are still moving to try and clear the field of anything else that's still around. And they do a spectacular job of clearing the field for you. At this particular juncture, by the time it rolls around to Tulura, Tulura, there are no moving craft on the field. All the craft on the field are held. All right. Well, I guess I'll. Uh, I probably I'll, I'll just start double moving to follow to follow with my my allies. Then. Does anyone here speak Abyssal? Um, I understand Abyssal. I have a right. translator. Same. Uh Tulur and Rusty, you see messages across your comm that are in Abyssal. And everyone else just sees gibberish. Uh, Tulur and Rusty see curse words across the comm in Abyssal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I do speak Abyssal. Okay, yeah, you see Congrats. it. Too. So, wait. Wow, that's unfortunate. Did, did I just pull a Vex and just absolutely piss Grapple. off the BBEG? Grapple! Yeah, only the BBEG in this case is the Cosmic Ooze that is actually Jubilex, the Demon Lord of the Abyss. Oh, is that all? Okay. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> the only Demon Lord in the Abyss. Uh, Talura, your turn. Yeah, I, what do I'm, you do? Nothing's I'm moving. Double, I'm double moving <laughs> towards my allies. Okay. Uh, Eisen. How far out are we from the, the carrier now? Uh, you are two double moves in, so, uh, Rusty and Dalgar are almost at the carrier, like, within a thousand feet. So how does projecting spells to the ships work? It doesn't, unless you have an arcane cannon. If you have a mega spell, it works like that. Or if you have an arcane cannon, you can just cast a spell through the arcane cannon. I don't know if Rusty stated there was an arcane cannon on the crab tank super ship. I don't know if there was or not. If there is, you can cast the mega spell through the arcane cannon. I think that's something we went over as soon as the battle started, and he does not have an arcane cannon. I'm pretty sure he does not. Then I guess I'll just keep point defense if there's any uh, small ships nearby. Okay. Um, you make some smaller pot shots at some of those ships that are, aren't are moving that are nearby. Um, and go ahead and roll me damage on your laser, your big shoulder laser. 
and any other ranged or... attack you want to have. Uh, you you auto hit them; they're not moving. Oh well, okay. Mm-hmm. Missing them would pretty much be almost impossible <laughs> from your perspective. Eighteen with the shoulder cannon. Okay. And seven with the rifle. Uh, that particular craft took damage from something else and actually just scorporates. Oh. So it kind of like and starts to sparkle down back into the ooze. I'm just going to reach up and mark on my shoulder uh, cannon, a uh, little hash mark. <laughs> <laughs> Scratch a little mark there. Uh, Mario, you keep pushing? Yeah, I'd like to keep going at that shield if I can. Okay. Uh, you may make an attack roll, and if you move on this turn, you are within a thousand feet of the carrier. Yes, I would love to move during this turn. Okay. Make your attack roll, but this time it is not at disadvantage. All right, that'll be 22. That is definitely a hit. Let's do 16 damage this time. Okay. Uh, the shield looks like it is starting to fail. You notice it's like flickering. It kind of like looks like it's ready to, to go down. And hopefully by the time we get there, it'll be done. Yep. Zora, if you move on this turn, you are within a, th- within a thousand feet of the carrier. Okay. I should note that Delgar and Rusty are already within a thousand feet of the carry. Alrighty. How far is that galactic ooze on the other side? Uh, it's actually connected to the carrier by underneath from a tendril. Okay. Then I will take my ship and our friend alert, and if need be, use my action to dash to get him within range. Okay. You dash and get within range, and this went spectacularly more than I expected. Um, And you drop alert off into the carrier, and uh, you see part of the carrier, you all notice, part of the carrier, uh, 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 an ooze moves off of Zora's ship, which you identify as alert, and stabs into the carrier. And as it does, you note part of the carrier begins to turn from the bright silver color to the dull gray that you know alert is actually composed of. So alert on this turn begins converting some of the ooze and does a pretty decent job of making more of himself. Uh, And that is what you do. Zora, do you do anything else? Or say anything else? No, I have absolutely no reason to do anything else. If I've got any additional movement, I will simply circle around. Okay. Um, then it is Dalgar, your turn. Well, I wouldn't see that Laura did that, especially after just getting hit by crit and another hit. Uh, you're more concerned with your own craft, but if you do look at the giant carrier in the distance, you note part of it is turning gray instead of silver. You know that alert is that color. Um, Alright, um, Dalgar will instead take um, the dodge action and just keep like the same distance but move to the side because he's not exactly sure what's happening, but he doesn't want to um, interfere with something that um, our friend is doing. You could fire at the shield. Shield? Yeah, there's a shield around it. Oh. Alert is considered a low impact object, so he was able to pierce the shield nanoscopically. Sure, I'll shoot at the shield. Instead of dodging. So dirty 20. Okay. I actually do hit with that. Alright, that is definitely a hit. That that dice. Uh, 
17 mega radiant Okay, the shield goes down. Thanks to you and Mario. And I, I guess I'm strafing for the sun. Okay. All right. Uh, Rusty. All right. So, this is it, boys. This is the moment we've been training for. Uh, yeah. All right. So, Rusty, Dusty, Krusty, and Mo are all going to run in sequence and each do a targeted attack with their scorchers. And, uh,. Rusty's going to start with the shield subsystems. Okay. To make sure they can't bring him back online. That's a 19 on the die, boss. That means that's a crit for me. That is definitely a hit. Uh, so that's going to be, what's he, 36? Now it's 66 for scorcher damage. Mm hmm. Okay. 30. Wait, if that's a crit, does that uh, get the chart? Yes. Yep. So give yeah, me your 100 uh, before you do the dice. Okay. Uh, 25. <laughs> I don't think this applies. Target is pushed back 15 feet and falls prone. Not really. Um, they are held currently, so it does not apply. <laughs> but right. that would be funny. All right, I'm going to start this dicing thing again. So, All right. All right, a uh, total of 21 all day, uh, mega fire damage. Okay, the shield the system ship. looks quite damaged. Not down, down? Uh, I mean, the shield itself is down, so. So, okay, the thing about the Scorchers, they bypass shields as like a damage thing, so they attack directly to the subsystem. Oh, so, okay. I don't know about how this thing is built, but most of them have 10 points for subsystem and they go down if they, if they hit that. Okay. Um, so that's- Works for me. Okay, uh, I'll let the others kind of like pick targets at random, but I think the second second priority uh, subsystem for the rest of the buckboards would be communications and then sensors, and then whatever else you felt like assigning to the other two. Okay. So I'll let you resolve that on their turn. Um, but yeah, that's that's my turn. Okay. Oh, actually, you know what? I, we get extra attack, so I'm gonna just go ahead and burn a regular my extra attack on that. Uh, that's going to be a 17 to hit. That's a hit. Okay. Four, six, eight, and... Okay. Ten extra mega fire damage. Just okay. whatever. All right. Um, that was your turn, Rusty. So we go to Quatsily. Okay. You can make pot shots at the carrier now that are not at disadvantage. I can do that, maybe. You note some of its subsystems are left, but most of its subsystems are down, thanks to the Buck Boys and Rusty. Well, and thanks to Mariel and Dalgar, the shields are down. Uh, well, I got a fifteen. For shooting out that. That is a hit. Yay. Uh, if only I could roll damage. Uh, 10. Something. 10. Okay. 10. Fine. That's fine. It's reasonable. Um, now everything else goes, or doesn't, rather, because the Silver Fleet still can't act. Hmm. I am so sorry, Blake. <laughs> oh, no, this is awesome. I'm, like, just at joy at this point at how awesome this is going for you. <laughs> this is just as exciting for me as it is for you. If I'm being 100% honest, this is awesome. We make these toys to break these toys. Exactly. Right, and it's great. I love it. Your allies begin blowing up some of the smaller craft and begin clearing more of a path towards everyone to get closer, but their craft are not particularly well to do against nanite attacks. So a lot of them kind of stay behind and pick off the rest of the fighters um, and and whatnot, kind of making sure that their weapons are ready. Uh, some of the big craft begin firing some of their mega weapons and spells at the ooze itself. 
which is, I mean, to say like firing a, 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 a single cruise missile at the planet Jupiter. It's, sure, it might blow up, but are you really going to notice any damage? <laughs> It's equivalent to what you see, just this truly epic spell, and it just looks like a, you know, there's a scuff mark that goes away <laughs> on the galaxy size or the solar system sized ooze. Uh, and we come back to Tilura on initiative, and you note that because of the damage of things that are done and the strange gray appearance on the front of the cruiser, um, an opening is forming on the uh, cruiser that it looks as though it is a port or a dock of sorts, and it is made of the same gray material that your dear friend Alert is made out of. Well. I guess I'm going to head that uh, towards that. Oh, I should also note, um, Alert has uh, sends a message to all of your comms, and the message notes, I have done everything I can, but there is organic matter on this craft I cannot destroy. A single piece of organic matter. Punch. It should look familiar to you. Punch. The picture comes up on the comms of the uh, legendary assassin. Punch. Punch. <laughs> So, Jalura, you move towards the, the dock? Yeah, I started just flying towards the dock. Okay. Uh, at the end of your double move, you are in the dock. Can we tell Mo to hit the life support systems for his attack? <laughs> sure. Uh, Ison. So, if this uh, biological was removed from the equation, would Alert be able to take over the rest of the carrier? Alert confirms that. How close, uh, uh, and, uh, with Rusty and I, are we right on top of this thing now? Yeah, you could, like, jump off into the dock from here. Okay, uh, I'll do that. Because you got rocket packs, right? Yes. I think your armor, yeah. See, yeah, I'm pretty sure your armor has rocket packs. I, I thought it was one of the upgrades. And whatever this uh, biological is, I need a charisma saving throw as I cast Banishment. <laughs> Um, we'll hold that until you can see it. Right now, you're on the dock. Fair hold that idea. I like it. I like it. But you can't see the object yet, or the biological matter in question. Yeah, then I'll AKA break like, into yes. the thing. Then. Yeah, you got to get into the. You're like you jumped off of Rusty's craft and you like jetpacked over and you've landed on the dock and now you're kind of on the dock that Alert created inside the front of this craft. Um, and now you have to kind of run it. So you're on the dock and getting ready to run it. And you notice Tulora's craft comes in at the same time you jump off Rusty's onto the dock and lands there as well. So I'll say that, that was, you had to kind of double move to get there. Yeah, that's what I was figuring I'd be doing. I figure, okay, like if, if we were going to be doing that action where we're going to board and actually like pop off and go in, then I can at least have Roctimus finish his movement by landing in the docking platform as long as it's available. Uh, I can, yeah, I can have you do that as part of your turn. Um, Cause the dock wasn't quite there yet until it was alerts turn. Okay. Uh, so Mariel. Okay. So are we are, are we all on the dock by now or just making your way there? Uh, you can get to the dock and begin to get off now if you want, just like Tulura did. Well, Tulura had to double move, but you were closer. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Okay, you, you land and are able to get off onto the dock with uh, Aizen. Uh, Zora. So at this point, I'm extremely torn between my decisions because I can sit out here and just continuously rain down meteors on this old ship until I run out of spell points. Uh-huh. <laughs> and... I mean, we are in it, so it'd be probably a good idea to not that danger was, that, close us. That decision was not part of my calculations. <laughs> um, the other option would be to enter the craft and attack the assassin. Yeah, and that's part of my split decision here, because I really just want to keep pilting this thing from orbit, just because... 
it took out an, my entire flotilla. I well, kind of have done the same. <laughs> specifically, the assassin is the one who took them out. And that's who you would be going inside to kill. If I no. need to be the devil's advocate here. <laughs> no, no, it, it's perfectly fine. I just imagine what's more satisfying than sitting back way, <laughs> right. way back where he can't even possibly reach me and just continuously bombard him. But yeah, if everybody else is getting out of their ships, I'll do the same. Okay. <laughs> you land and hop out. Peer pressure's a bitch. It is. Well, to be fair, normally I only fire my spells when Talora is in melee range of my target. <laughs> everybody <laughs> else just happens to be doing that. It'd probably look bad if I you know, did this while the fleet was watching. Maybe. Dalgar? So, the, that fleet's no longer stunned, and the cruiser's essentially down. What about the rest mm -hmm. of the fleet? I know, like, half of it, apparently, was affected by when the oh, cruiser did something. The fleet is blown up outside. Like, it just, it all dissipated? The allies have, your allies said just, they rolled so many criticals, it was ridiculous um, on their turn, and they just wiped out the remaining fleet that was present, thanks to the fact that they were being held. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't have all hit them. And the so at this point, the carrier is what's left. As and still held. entering the cruiser, do I notice anything about the cruiser? Like, because everything's made of a ooze, essentially. Um, because well, it's a nanite swarm. I should do state I notice, like, these... as the dock bay is open, and they go inside, it goes like, oh. No, the, the dock bay itself, as well as a portion around the front of the craft, is this gray paint, like this plain, bland gray color that you know alert is normally color. colored like. And the rest of the ooze, as well as the giant solar system-sized cosmic version, is all a bright, glimmery silver that's behind it and that that's on it like the so if this is the front of the carrier the cruiser there's a whole big section of it that is gray and the ooze is connected to the back of the carrier but that part of it is slowly turning the whole carrier is slowly turning that gray color but you know alert cannot destroy organic matter aka it can't kill living things like you guys and he said there was an organic matter in here I cannot deal with. AKA the assassin. Okay. AKA come over here so we can beat this guy's ass. Since yeah. since that information was given, um, then I would also follow and go inside. Okay. All right. Uh, you are able to land and get out on your turn because you only had a you had a very small movement to go. Otherwise, uh, I, wanted to, I was going to sit outside and observe just to make sure like he actually is able to do what he's doing right. or if the ooze is gonna like be able uh, to fight back. It technically Zora can continue to hold on on this particular um action. Um because it's a spell. As long as he's able to hold this Zora is able to hold the spell then it'll still happen. So, um oh, just one more quick question. The Sure. The silver part, is it still connected to the main blob? Or is it, um, if they start to sever that connection? It's still connected at this point. Okay. Right. That's all. Um, Rusty, land and get out. Ooh. Uh, so, Roctimus is going to land, it's going to take a knee. Uh, my crab tank is going to pop off the neck and hop down and just start stomping off in the direction of the signal of the biological. Okay. All right. If there's any doors in the way, he'll shoot them or wham them. If there's any... Um, at this groups. point, there isn't any doors per se, as it's like a dock that Alert has created, and you've all kind of landed and got out on the docking platform, and that's like the door is like forming in the distance, like alert is like pushing through to the biological matter to make you a space, but hasn't got there yet. Oh, well, that's great then. All right. So yeah, whoever wants to ride shotgun with Rusty can get in the passenger seat. I guess uh, it's probably going to be Eisen. Oh, Eisen's like out on the dock getting ready to run in himself at whatever happens to happen. 
I he's a dwarf. I think I might be faster than him. <laughs> I think everybody's <laughs> faster than Aizen. Um, Quetzali. Uh, Quetzali will be right back. Oh, okay. Um, I have sorry. a feeling another cup of spiked hot chocolate is being prepared. <laughs> he doesn't have to go to bed tonight, so he can have fun with that. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Uh, the silver fleet is still held. Um, and the uh, allies just basically begin to bombard the surrounding area without damaging the craft you're getting into. Begin unloading on the actual ooze itself. Um, some of them begin to uh, basically attempt to like prevent the ooze from spreading to their craft as well. Um, you know, some of the glimmer is kind of getting on some of the other craft out there, so they're trying to take care of that on their own right. Many of them had shields, so they were prepared for this, but some of them did not, per se. If the rest of the buckboards want to take the you know, the rest of their fighter wing and just go like try and hold this thing down, that's fine. They don't you don't need to come with me. <laughs> yeah, no, they stay outside to kind of shoot stuff and blow stuff up. Yeah, just have a good old time. Yeah, they're going to. Um Okay, I'm back. Okay. Uh, what do you do? Uh, Mariel has landed and gotten out. Yeah, I'm going to get out. Okay. All right, you get out and begin to move towards the the forming doorway. Um, and on alerts turn, a singular hallway kind of like mazes through the ooze in one go. And you note that this has formed large enough for even uh, the, the crab tank to get down. Um, the hallway forms and you get a, a, a voice from alert um, on your comms and alert goes, I will do the best I can to hold off the ooze as I convert it. Destroy the organic matter and we will win. Oh, there we are. All right. Uh, beginning turn to Lura. There is now a path forward. All right. Well, I'm just going to just book it. Double move, go through. All right, you double move into a large open area where you see the legendary assassin standing in the middle of the room. He is gross, ooze-like purple armor present on him and none, none the less disturbing than it was the last time you saw it. Eisen, your turn. Second verse is the first uh, native charisma save. Okay. You move in, and as soon as you make eyes on the target, you cast Banishment. I do. Why are we banishing him? He comes back. Yes, but then I then I alert can take over the rest of the ship. Fair. It's more fun to beat the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah, so when he comes back, You'll get the chance. we have a brand new ship. <laughs> what's, your, uh, what's your save? 16. Okay. He succeeds. Bitch. I shoot him in the face with my cannon. Okay. <laughs> I think that was an action to cast the spell, though, so we'll 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 hold the the uh, cannon shooting. <laughs> I have two actions. What? No, you have two attack actions, but that does, that doesn't mean you can use two. Yeah, attacks. if you've used a spell, it counts as like your full action. Yeah. All right, then I will use my second. What was that feature? It's a long. Action search. Aha. That. Okay. Can. That's valid. valid. <laughs> yep. Now you can shoot him with a cannon. <laughs> now you can shoot him in the face. <laughs> 19. That hits. Nineteen, radiant to the face. Okay, he does not look like he liked that. I hope he didn't. His helmet looks burned and kind of scuffed, and less grossly oozy. Hopefully, more crispy, but that'll be it. 
Yeah, a little crispy, which comes at a bit of relief because it was kind of ooze-like and gross. Uh, Mariel. Um, so how far away is he from us? If you double move, you are all up in his grill. If you single move, you can shoot at him. Okay. And is he five feet within a wall, like near a wall at all? Ah, uh, he's 10 feet from a wall. Okay, never mind. Then I will do a single move and try to shoot. Okay. Fire away. Uh, how does a 17 sound? A 17 sounds like you just missed. Dang. Oh. Can I try to fire again with disadvantage with my cool gun? You sure can. You do. Oh, well, I missed again. I got it. Oh, you tried. <laughs> Next time. Yes. Um, after Mariel, we have Zora. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. You can move in and start slicing, or you can take a, you can, you can double move to be within slicing range or move a single movement and shoot at it. Well, considering most of my spells and abilities are done at range. Well, and mind you, you are concentrating on a spell as well. So don't cast a spell that requires concentration while oh, you're yeah, concentrating. No, no, no I'm, <laughs> I'm very aware of that fact. Believe me, no. I, anything I'm doing now is instantaneous, period. Got it. I am not okay. pulling that move. That being said, uh, I do ask everybody to kind of hit the walls as I f cast Void Wind as a channeled spell. All right. 60 What's foot that? long, 10 foot wide blast of energy. Blast originates from a point you choose, which is basically the uh, chakram that I've got. Mm -hmm. Aimed in the direction you choose, each creature within the line must make a dex saving throw. Okay. On a failed save, it's 4d8 radiant. But this is going... This is going through my <laughs> chakram as a channeled spell, so it does half as much on a successful save. Oh, wait, no. Deck saving throw. If I channel it, that's a roll to hit, is it not? I think based because, on your abilities, it's a roll to hit instead of a save, yeah. Yeah, because I'm a channeler. I'm a... Mm -hmm. Jeez, talk about the dust on the character sheet. <laughs> it's just, I just not the only one with character sheet dust. <laughs> Indeed. So, what is my to hit with my chakram? Here we go. Give me something good. Twenty-two to hit. That is a hit. Woohoo! So that is what's the total? Forty-eight radiant plus my chakram's damage. Oh god, I need my calculator. <laughs> because of Rusty's wonderful abilities at uh, making a super heavy massive chakram I get 94 as well as the 4d8 yikes on bikes yes and channelers are scary <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm Channels with exotic weapons are extra scary. Yep. So I don't For know. Sure. I don't know if this needs to be separated, but the forty-eight is radiant. The ninety-four is necrotic. No. Then it is a forty-eight all day. Whew. Okay. Uh, you know. As you damage him, he kind of grabs his helmet as if fighting something inside his head. Uh, and Dalgar, it's your turn. He appears to be fighting something inside his head. And he grabs his helmet like like he's like something hurt his brain or he's got a headache or something. You're not sure. One last note. Additionally, a creature that failed its saving throw is pushed back five feet for each die which rolled an eight. I got okay. one that rolled an eight. Well, he's pushed back five feet. Muriel, he is now five feet from a wall. <laughs> um, he needs a wisdom. Hmm. 
Okay, what's the DC? 16. He's already used all of those. He critically fails. Okay, I cast oh. detect thoughts on him. What's going on? Uh-oh. Um, well, you hear a bellowing, deep, horrible noise that sounds like a foul language that you don't speak. Um, that almost hurts your brain just listening to it. And the other one is the assassin's voice, which says, No, I will not be used as your puppet. I will stand here and let them send me back to the abyss. As he's kind of arguing back and forth with this voice, but you only hear his side of it because the other side is, You know. I just hopped in here real quick. I need to go. See you guys. <laughs> Thanks Goodbye. for joining us. Oh, bye. I'm getting up in three hours for work. Yeah, oh, get to bed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, get bye. to bed. I love you. <laughs> Thanks for joining Thank us. <laughs> That's commitment. Mm -hmm. Getting okay. out in three hours. Better if she sleeps like Batman. I, like in two hour shifts. Oh, no. Upside she'll, down, hanging she'll from go rafters. to work. She'll go to work and then be home by like eh, seven ish, usually. And then she'll sleep for like four hours. Ah, no, no, for Comic Canon, Batman can sleep, I think it's either two or three hours and be fully rested as if he got a full eight hours. Yeah. Come on, Amy. Um, Come on, and that, that's the <laughs> argument you hear going on in his head, Delgar. Um, well, I say. As you guys can clearly tell, I'm doing some like weird mind reading thing. Um, apparently, it's possessed by some entity. Do any of you have a way of severing? I've got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Are we on Rusty's initiative now? <laughs> and that's my turn. Uh, yeah, I Dalgar's turn my just action. happened. Okay. So, yes. Well, uh, Rusty's going to take a, use his free a action item to take a swig of his distilled nebula and uh, his bonus action to wang his chest and activate his overdrive module that he's had it installed. It's like, y'all, you remember TF2 where uh, yeah. the medic installs the, the Uber? So it's, yeah. it's it's a bit like that. Okay. So he gives himself a nice big thump on the chest, and all of a sudden you see like a glow coming out of the cockpit of the crab, and uh, he's the crab is just advancing. Like he's only going to use a regular movement, but while he's advancing, he's going to be taking uh, four shots all at disadvantage with his brand new laser gun on the crab. Okay. Ah. Fuck me at disadvantage. This. This. Okay, so I got. <laughs> um, plus 12. So it's a 15, a 12, a 7, and a 19. Did Those are, yeah, his four shot rolls. Okay. Um, the 19 and anything above 19 hits. Okay, so just, just one then. Um, okay. So it's 5d4 plus 1d4 of necrotic. Um, I'm going to go ahead and roll the necrotic damage because that actually does something. All right, Max. So uh, the crab heals for four points. So... Four, and that's ten and twelve. Okay, so for twelve, it's radiant damage except for the necrotic. So it's eight radiant and four necrotic. Okay. Um. And he should be in melee range at the end of all this. Watsley. So he's like what two moves away from me? 
Uh, you're still on the dock, so if you double moved, you'd be all up in his grill. Oh, wait, what's your movement speed? I'm sorry. Yeah. Forgot you're a monk. 40. Okay. Um, yeah, no, you, you'd be real, like within 20 feet of him if you single moved. Okay. I can do that anyway. Yeah. If you had ranged attacks, you could make oh, a single move and blast at him. But I do. <laughs> but I do have those. Then blast away. I'm going to. I'm going to use uh, finger guns, actually. Nice. Nice. That's just a attack <laughs> roll. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh critical <laughs> so nice to hit. nice roll percentage dice and All right. zora can tell us what that does on the chart yeah. 52 52 your staggering blow makes the target nauseous and it is poisoned until the end of your next turn Somehow that, makes, like so, somehow that makes sense for a snake. Nice. It I apologize does. for the game show host's voice there. Oh, no, that works perfectly. I like it even better. And she just runs up. And if you've ever seen Yu Yu Hakusho, she literally does like the spirit gun pose. And <laughs> actually, yeah, gun. yeah. Yeah, she actually does go spirit gun and fires. Fucking weed. Nice. So, so the creature at disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks does not say saves nice that is what is finger guns damage from? at 11 uh 12 well it, it's 13? a cantrip. yeah yeah it's 1d8 i think right or... it should be 3d8 at that level oh wow i'm bad at dice things <laughs> yeah so it's 3d8 but you crit so it's 68 Ooh. Lucky roll all ones. I did not. Uh, that is 36 damage. 36. Nice. Uh, that looks incredibly effective. Um, he looks as though he's just not having a great day. Um, and on his turn, you you see part of him tries to lash out at you, and the other half of him kind of pulls it back. Like he, the damage that you did to him, the first who ever critted on forty eight damage there, um, did enough to allow him to have some momentary control, and he just, just seems to be standing there. And you hear him say, "Hurry up and kill me." I don't know how long I can hold it back. Oh, it's your only hope of stopping this thing. We're working to on Lura, it. it's your turn. Oh, he wants to quick death. All right. Let me help with that. All right. Give him a slow death. <laughs> so I'm going to move in. Uh, I assume with one move and uh, dash I can, and, a, and, a, and a telepunch, I can get to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fallen. So. Fallen, but at what cost? Uh, a punch to the face for him. Yeah. <laughs> I was right. waiting for it, Scotty. I was waiting for it. <laughs> so yeah, I will telepunch him. That's going to be a 25 to hit. I'm going to drop my arcane surge on him for this. Which just means I deal twice the number of damage dice by the spell. Oh my and god. <laughs> Becky, Jesse, and the one of the best things about this spell, it very specifically says, as long as you don't crit. Oh yeah. It's because, uh, it, you know, then we don't get the Kev thing, where waits for crit, drops all all uh, henshin points, insta nukes them. Let me just drop my dice here. And just, just, <laughs> pretty much. One, two, three, four, five. Do I have enough D8s for this? <laughs> Questions I never thought I'd ask. I'm going to need a, a 
just I, I need to I need to get a dice roller out. I think I have another D eight. Sweet. I do have just enough. Two. Wait. Two, let me make sure two, I'm mathing. Uh, you haven't played a paladin. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Paladins. Ooh, it's yes, like, those are. I pleasant. don't have enough D eight. <laughs> I'm, my crits I'm are a technically playing a paladin. Technically. In Vex's game. Yeah. Um, I quite actually no. I, I was about to ask, uh, is it resistant? But it doesn't matter if it's resistant or not because I'm doing all acid damage anyways. I was gonna say, are you able to do anything else? I don't think you can. Can you? It's all acid. I can do with acid, electric, um, punch, just straight punch damage. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a few different types I can uh, do. You probably would have remembered from your previous fight with him that cold would be effective and not have chosen acid. Okay, actually, I didn't take part of that fight. I was gone for that session. Someone would have. Told yeah, you but on. your friends would have told yeah, you. About then all right, it. we'll just switch it to be. I'll just use arc blade because one of them did acid damage to him and saw yeah. that it was completely useless. I will do arc blade then, which is just uh, electric flavored of this. Yeah. Oh, actually, here's the next question. Um, did I exceed his AC by five or more? Uh, what was your to hit? Uh, 20, I think it was like 20, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 25. You just beat it by Fuck five. Fuck yes. So I add my, my proficiency to this as well. Where is my proficiency again? Fuck. Ah, plus four. So, uh, so that is 65 electric damage. Oh my god. Straight to the jaw. <laughs> He's Wang. not having a good day. He looks bloody, one could say. Good. I hope so. <laughs> After dropping that on him, I hope yeah. he's fucking hurting. Uh, Eisen. How far away is he? He is, you moved uh... 40 feet? 40 feet. Alright, let's see what is my short legs. 25. I'll uh, move towards him and uh, fire my shoulder again into his face again. Okay. Gives me an attack. If I must. <laughs> you must, you must. 18. 18 does not hit. I said 19. Oh, 19 hits. Okay. 16 radiant. Okay. Wait. Oh, sorry, that was 18 radiant. All right. He's Wish still it. up, but barely. Wish I'd get closer to him, but... Uh... You can hit him with another ranged attack. You have two attacks, don't you? Oh, that's you true. Can hit him with another ranged attack. Then, yes. I'm going to shoot him with a rifle. All right. Yeah, that, that would be 18, so that won't hit. Okay, that misses. Do you do anything else? No, that's it. Okay. Mariel's turn. Um, yeah. All right, so Zora's turn. So, just so everybody is aware, I almost pulled a big whoops. Oops. Because of the animation animation the movement of him trying to pull down the helmet that was effectively being knocked off of him i was about to use telekinesis to get it away from him but that's a concentration spell yeah that would have been a noob so i yeah. am very glad you did <laughs> yeah so that being said our friend is now adjacent to a wall you might say uh -huh. yes you might yep, he's up against it Boy, oh boy, do I love some of these channeler-specific spells. Such as Icicle Javelin. I wonder oh. if anybody remembers this one. 
Yeah. <laughs> I sure do. This is going to be funny. Yo. So, I'm going to channel me a nice icicle javelin into my wonderful little chakram. However, I'm going to pump it up a bit. I'm going to max it out with my spell slots. I'm All passing right. it at third level instead of first. <sighs> Don't fuck okay. this. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Indeed. Also, you and these ice ice spells, man. Shut up, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> There's a 24 hit, good sir. Uh, 24 hits quite a bit. <laughs> One moment while I get my calculator out again. And that is 3d8 plus the bumped up spell, which is an extra d8. So another two. Roll that beautiful bean, but it foot footage. Mm -hmm. I am an idiot. Footage. Footage. That's my new word now. Footage. I like it. Is that Oof. so, Chorizo? Yeah, he didn't like. He was like sinking through my lap, and I had to pick him up, and he just didn't want to be picked up. <laughs> but, oh my it, god, I'm sinking! Yeah, it, it was that, or like fall out of the chair. So, so I don't know if you need me to specify the difference between these two damages. No, but it is a total of forty-nine damage, narcotic. Ooh and cold. Narcotic? Narcotic yes. shit. Yeah, Narcotic. <laughs> My favorite kind of damage. <laughs> it's this a is, great day today. Um, <laughs> this is palliative care at this point. And the sword he has would like to now lay your location. As you wow. throw the chakram and pin him to the wall, the last gasp of breath coming out of him is, thank you. And he literally, like, like seems to be pulled apart and like collapses in on himself like he himself was made of ooze um and seems to disappear and as that happens you hear alert go ah there we go and the entire craft seems to lurch ever so briefly and then you hear alert say hmm that's interesting what? I've never done that before. Oh. Or that. Hmm. And then Alert says, ah, there we go. Sorry. Getting used to being a spaceship and not an individual creature. Can you not? I done? can see that taking up some time. Can you not be both? Yeah. Is it over? Oh, it's yeah. difficult, but I'm getting used to it. And you note someone else standing next to you as you all kind of look oh, over fuck. suddenly as you feel the presence really of nice. someone just like there. Not in the fuck. Um, yeah, you're like, what? But gee, everyone's punch. like ready to throw punches. Um, <laughs> and uh, you note it's Dusoff and he's just slow, cap slow clapping. This is bullshit. I didn't even get to use my cool new weapons. <laughs> I, 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 I was going to say is like, I, I, never, I never trust anybody who just appears and slow clapping at the same time. I do so enjoy the theatrics, and that was a beautiful sight indeed. I watched from one of the elven cruisers. Absolutely magnificent. Del Delgar has Quite a, a back delicious like 30 fight. Feet away as a reaction. <laughs> it was his turn okay. next, and that just happened out of nowhere. Like a cat in a cucumber. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> quite so, quite so he just leans over to Flora. Who is this guy? Well, he, I he do appreciate right we all of the assistance. The him. cosmic ooze is no more, thanks to you and your friends and your armada of friends back there. I will have the Saint of Vincent come by and help anyone who is injured or help the dead hopefully be brought back if there's enough clerics to do that um, of any particular problem that may have occurred. I have some friends in the heavens. I will see if any of them can assist with that as well. I do appreciate what you've done for the galaxy, but I think your particular participation in this isn't quite over yet, but mine is. I do thank you for providing me with a solution to resolve the crisis in 18 other universes, aside from this one. Now that you have given me the solution, and your dear friend alert here. 
I can save those universes as well. So I do thank you for providing not just this universe with safety, but 18 other universes from safety of this particular threat. And sadly, while I will tell them of your particular deeds, they don't know who you are. So as much as I'd like to say you will be famous in those 18 universes, they may not be as famous as you imagine. There's no need. Sorry. There is no need. Oh, I should note, while I can't provide you with what I would like to give you right now, I am going to provide a rather large donation on behalf of the Silverfleet's loot, uh, which has already been taken that to was you. Past. So when you return to your ring world, you will have a very large pile of reward to enjoy. We get, we get there, and it's just a shit ton of bombs that are on a timer, and it's like three, two, one. <laughs> three, two, one, Sorry, go. he's pulling off like 110% villain vibes. It's like an Olympic swimming pool full of this nanite ooze that didn't die. Oh, I was going to say, it's just, the, it's just the mega plague. Yeah, it's the super plague. Um, I do thank you for everything you have done. Really, I do. I don't think you understand exactly how many universes may potentially be saved more than just the 18 I found. What kind of universe can't... I don't know. I guess we just got the lucky one today. Yes. That's the case. In the other universes, you were not so lucky. Meanwhile, in the alternate universe, Zora's like, well, how do spells work? Ah! <laughs> It's absorbed into the day next morning. Zora of that universe was a fighter instead of a wizard, so the fight went badly. <laughs> Just not a channeler. Didn't go well. <laughs> That's why right. the other universes failed. They, they didn't have a channeler. Um, <laughs> or, or, you know, Tal or Talura <laughs> drop kicking the boss for 80 yeah, da 60 right. damage as well. <laughs> 60 damage to the face, Talura kick. But, uh, and then another another alternate universe, and it's like everybody's Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. They aren't yeah. already? That, that's this universe. I mean, like like the literal World of War World Warcraft character, Leroy Jenkins, but it's just yeah. our, our class. So, so like he's pal happened. he's like a paladin or something, right? I don't know World of Warcraft. Um, I don't know. So <laughs> that and it's like a Chandler version of himself. And he was a warrior and not a paladin. So the best he could do was literally charge thirty feet straight forward when he started that checking. initial fight. Hmm. That's why he got so far ahead of everybody was because he got close enough and just charged in. So that's what would have happened if I had invented the thing longer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you don't have an inspiration, you do now. Um, longer? <laughs> Futurama reference. I oh, like no, that. I, yeah, I, that was good. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, and at that point, Dusoff Same. and Alert, um, you guys kind of leave. There's not much else here in this craft. Mm -hmm. um, as alerts converting it all into himself or has already um so you kind of get back into your ships and leave and as you leave you turn around and kind of look and you know the whole cosmic ooze the size of like a solar system kind of like into one just giant ball and uh, standing atop that ball so, so the cosmic ooze doesn't try to separate itself via osmosis away from the part that's getting swallowed by it 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 can't it that conversion happened as you were in here. Mm -hmm. okay. Kind of like when by the time you get out, it's already been converted back into alert. That that conflict happened like while you were inside. Um, which is uh, oddly oddly enough very anticlimactic. <laughs> you hope to see this epic battle of oozes, but it it didn't quite turn out that way. By the time you got out there, alert had already won. Um, and the standing atop that giant sphere of that is now alert um, is this just massive, massive dragon. Not as big as the Draco that you woke up, oh, but okay. this very massive dragon um, that you now identify as Dusov. 
Um, the scales look as they are they're made of magma. And it casts some sort of crazy mega spell, and you see a hole get ripped in reality. And the ooze itself sort of pours into the hole, that is the ooze that is alert. And then the dragon flies through the hole, and two hands kind of come out and pull the hole shut. I know what kind of dragon he like Uh huh. <laughs> I actually played him in a campaign, by the way. He's a hellfire worm. Yeah. <laughs> Also, Talora will lean over to Quetzley after that. And like, Remember, you know the Edge Lord that travels with us? Yeah, that's his dad. <laughs> Not Punch. Sorry, it's the way you describe it. <laughs> Which one was the Edge Lord again? The the the, the angel demon dude. Oh. Not Edge Lord. His... He's like right there. He's like in, he was riding with you the entire time. Yeah. He, this, this oh, isn't, you mean outside? This isn't the angle parent. It's the demon. <laughs> it's not uh, cat mom. It's 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 biblically correct angel mom. So, it's so mom. you all know. Here's the here's the official artwork for Hellfire Worm. Not not punch. Oh. Not punch. When in doubt, not punch. Sick. I mean, we did know about what um, he did because he did melt those people. Yeah, but this is what you see minus the fire. Nice. Yeah, you can't have fire in space. Nope, there's no oxygen to burn. Damn. Okay. So, uh, that quick answer. nap, and then we go handle the other thing that we were supposed to destroy. Nut punch? At what, what's the nap? Well, you also know that quick nap will have to be followed by um, purchasing yeah. slash modifying yeah. slash creating craft that are capable of flying in a dead magic zone in order to exactly. get to the other problem. <laughs> oh. Which, actually... And, 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 well, granted, we did send, or I, said, I made the joke, he's right with you, but no, we sent him over to another place to pick up that thing for us. Yeah, he's picking up some nullifiers to allow you to use your own individual abilities in the dead magic zone. You guys still have to make a slash create slash convert a spaceship to work in the dead magic zone. Or you could just take the DNA ship. Ah, uh, well. Because I mean, it already travels without using magic. That's all well and good for the DNA ship, but I feel like we're going to need at least some some fighter size rejigging and probably my apparatus as well. So you have some planning slash building to do. Mm. All right, then. All right, and we will stop there for the session tonight. I do appreciate all the awesomeness that was what everyone did today. Quatsley, I'm sorry you did not get to land a super awesome punch good. with your new ability. It was good. I mean, I, did not punch. I didn't get the nut punch, but I you, did get the spirit gun, so that's right. Fine. You did get the spirit gun, and it was very effective. And actually, your spirit gun triggered him to make a save oh. uh, because you did so much damage that Hell he yeah. had to make a save, and because he succeeded his save, he was able to resist the armor and didn't attack you. Nice. If you hadn't done the damage you did, no. we would have had to wait till Tulura's turn in order to for him to make the save, and he may or may not have succeeded. Not punch. Right. Not punch. <laughs> I'm gonna get these, I'm gonna get those things that uh, Rusty made for Quetzal, like, I'm gonna go talk to Dr. Tempish and be like, yo, can you install these into my arms, like cybernetics? Oh, she would love for you to say that. <laughs> I mean, they're they're already concealable, so they're nice and tidy packed away. So I don't don't think double I'm concealable. Double also, concealable. I need to I need, <laughs> I need to get I need yeah. to get Rusty to get me a nice uh, upgrade for some fist weapons. I'm currently literally just using my raw fists. Right, and um, we will do that. I will next link time. You. Next I, time. I, I will link you, know? you the. Uh, the thing okay Sweet. so we will do some plugs here and then we can be on our merry way i will first patch the pass the torch of plugs over to to Lura. hey that's me that's you well you could find me on my twitch or twitter my twitch or my twitter is uh vexy actually my twitch is fracture moon D D, where uh current we unfortunately have to say goodbye to one of our games on sunday not uh Unfortunately, our masks game will be going offline. So, fortunately, that will be going. But um, we have next week coming up, uh, Star uh, Saffron Academy. And then uh, we also have uh, Unwritten. So come check those games out. It's a blast. 
And then stay tuned for a, in a couple, maybe a month or so, because uh, I'm going to be go- trying to do some uh, consistent game streaming at some point. So Woo. come check that out. That for me. Okay, what's, the, what's the torch to? Hold, what's the uh, word on um, uh, the Lancer? It's it's in the air. I'll have to have a chat with you guys tomorrow. Okay. For it. I kind of I kind of figured. Yeah. I just wanted to see if there was something yeah. going on. Uh, and I'll give it over to Alt. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Hello. Uh, you can find me at Alt Zeal on Twitter. Um, I have been drawing a lot of tactical stuff lately because I like drawing tactical stuff. Um, also, Max. Uh, I also have fan fiction now. That's also at Alt Zeal on fan fiction. Um, I actually posted the second part at the beginning of this week, so it's up to like 30,000 words at this point. Um, other than that, uh, you should go follow Kali because she's not here at Caliloquy. She, I think she still has commissions open. I'm not sure. I, don't I believe say, so. Yeah. I think she said um, she did. She does really nice art. It's very cute and very pretty. It's amazing. Um, still waiting for you to open up your mecha, your uh, commissions. Sorry. Yeah, I'm going to do that at some point. I just got to get used to using these markers because I'm still like every time. Like, I like the way it's looking right now, but I'm like, I can still see patches that I missed. And I'm like, eh. Yeah. So once I get used to the traditional art, since my tablet is dead, um, right. then I'll I'll open up commissions again. <laughs> but well, I, let, me, let me know because Rusty and his uh, <laughs> cavalcade of constructions. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I will pass it uh, to you then, Jesse. Ah well, thank you. Uh, so, new episodes of Quantum Rose are still being recorded. Uh, we are finally getting underway with the editing and mix down of our episodes. We had a pretty big work stoppage there for a while, but we're back on track. Uh, so be looking to that in the near future. In the meantime, you can still check out Season 1 over on my YouTube channel. And that is uh, youtube.com slash backchannel1. And that's the only thing I'm producing, but I'm also participating in several other games on this stream. Uh, this time next week will be Ghost of Saltmarsh, uh, where in, I can't remember what we're doing, but Scotty, do you want to take it away? Uh, sure. Um, you guys are at the sty, and you guys are trying to figure out this murder mystery when you were attacked by these weird water elemental thingies right outside the warehouse. You... Mm-hmm. And, the com- and the combat ended right at the end of We'll see what the party does. Um, uh, but the next, since uh, it's going to be for plugs, next game on this channel will be Wednesday as we continue our Rhyme of the Frostbitten campaign, where I might have to do an off camera session with some people that are not technically in the campaign, but they are as NPCs to see what the heck they're doing in Icewind Dale. Uh, that will be fun. Uh, the party just got done with five sessions of combat. Same combat. Five. Um, so they're taking a well-deserved long rest. And we'll see what they want. All right. Well, I. does anyone else have any plugs? Negative. Three prong. Hope okay. it's grounded. Yeah, well, that's why it's three-pronged. Uh, okay. <laughs> the one thing I will say is I hope there are many, many sunflowers that bloom in the summertime in Europe. Right. Me too. All right. Well, um, then I guess we will catch you next time, Space Cowboys. Bye. 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 Bye.